Hello everyone. In this uh, video, I'm going to give you a quick overview of the course. Uh, it's been a little edited because I realized there were some things in it that were specific to a particular year. And so I've been trying to clean that up a little bit to make it more general. So I didn't leave any false information in there. Uh, so as a result, you're seeing a different version of me a year older uh, right now than you will see in the video you're about to see. Um, so what are the course goals? Well, the course goals are that by the end of this course, you should be able to explain the importance of AI in business and management decisions, define and compare up-to-date AI terms and their use in moder for modern matter management, create a plan for developing an AI project, and that's a big part of the group project that we'll be discussing, understand how to use AI to gain insights into a business decision, and develop enough confidence with AI to present those insights in a group setting. I'd like to talk a little bit about what the course is both about and not about, right? So that course goals kind of line up a lot with what the course is about, right? Developing awareness of AI and the accompanying tools, understanding how you can use those tools to solve business problems, and providing you with some basic resources so that when you don't know the answer to a question about AI, you know where to go out and find those answers. Um, illustrating all these tools and all this knowledge with a short project that will allow you to analyze data in a real-time environment. And there's both a group project and a conceptual assignment as well. Um, and it is a hands-on approach to learning about some of these tech tools, but not all of them, right? And in fact, this course is not about a comprehensive explanation of all aspects of machine learning and artificial intelligence. After all, it's only one credit hour, right? So it's not we don't have the time in this course to really go through all that. Though if you have particular questions about anything, please email me and I'll, I'll see what I can do to answer those questions. It is also not a comprehensive exploration of all possible platforms that could be used to explore artificial intelligence. For example, we won't be discussing in detail Orange, JavaScript, Excel, Azure, and many of these other tools that you could use and have been used to examine some of these same concepts. But if you want to talk about the trade-offs between the tools we are going to talk about and these tools, then please let me know and we'll talk about those. Finally, these slides and these video tutorials are not meant to necessarily be a step-by-step -step instruction guide. Instead, they're meant to help you or assist you uh, in understanding what you're doing. Um, there are many links of additional information on the Moodle and a whole set of resources that I've posted there that you can look to go through and find additional content. So let's talk about the two major components, the group project and the conceptual assignment. In the group project, you're gonna be working with four or five of your classmates, three maybe, uh, to identify a data set that you want to explore and try to use the knowledge you gain in the class to better understand. Once you've identified that data set, and I'll provide you some resources that you might look at for those data sets, such as Kaggle, right? Then you wanna identify a research question that you wanna ask about that data. Uh, for instance, what topics are most frequently talked about in uh, that that um, data set, right? So in this example, right, for instance, imagine you're looking at Twitter data about the COVID pandemic, right? You could try to see if I pull down all that data, what topics are people most frequently talking about in that space, right? Then you need to conduct some analysis on the data to answer your question. Based on the results, come up with potentially a new question, um, and then repeat steps to uh, to five, kind of three to five more times. Come up with an answer, essentially three to five questions about the data. And then you're gonna present those results to me via teleconference uh, the last week of class. So as I mentioned, teams should be around five people. The final presentations are only gonna be 10 to 15 minutes. And any topics is okay, right? You can choose, there's a classic one that people like to choose about the Titanic, right? And how predicting whether or not people would survive. But you can choose any data set at all. Um, the point is, I just want you to get you working with AI, right? Now, the more business and managerially related it is, the better, right? So I'd push you a little bit to try and consider some of those. Uh, but really, if you don't feel comfortable with some of those data sets, I, I completely understand. The conceptual assignment, which is up already, is essentially a mini case study and must be completed individually. Uh, it is available now and can be turned in at any time during the course. It's expected that you are going to provide about a half-page answer to each question, and you're going to build upon what you've learned in the course. 
So what what is that? what is the actual format for the content of the course, right? So the course format is divided into five sessions, right? And each of these sessions contains both a section on concepts and theoretical aspects of the AI, a session where we talk about review of applications, right? And then some hands-on work in our studio, which is the platform we're gonna be using for this course. So session one talks about the basic definitions of what is AI, what is classification regression, what is supervised versus unsupervised versus reinforcement learning. Right? Session two starts to get into some of the actual methods like linear logistic regression, k-nearest neighbors, naive bays, and support vector machines. Then session three gets into decision trees, random forest, evolutionary computation, genetic algorithms. While session four talks about natural language processing, sentiment analysis, and managing AI. In some ways, session four is a more applied session than some of the other ones. And then session five is going to talk about perceptions, neural nets, and deep learning because I want to leave you with kind of where a lot the kind of catchy words that a lot of people are using now in the AI space. So how is this material going to be delivered to you? Well, all the content is, is going to be available online on Moodle. The videos will be on YouTube and linked to Moodle. In addition, you can use the URL go.ncsu.edu slash AI YouTube to get a playlist with all the videos on them, right? Finally, um, to end, wrap up this little introduction to the course, I want to mention some of the resources, right? So there is a lot of materials out there that you might look at. These are a few books that I found very useful when trying to understand AI. Um, so the machine learning book in the uh, bottom left corner here, the blue one, that was the book that I basically learned a lot of my machine learning from. It's a, by Mitchell. It's been around for quite a while. Um, the uh, pattern recognition and machine learning book, that kind of came out shortly after I took my class in that space, right? Um, elements of statistical learning became popular in the early 2000s, right? Um, and machine learning, a probabilistic perspective, is kind of one of the more recent uh, additions in this space. Now, I also point out artificial intelligence, and we'll shortly get into the discussion between artificial intelligence and machine learning. But this is the book, the Russell and Norbert first edition was the one that I used in my um, intro to AI class that I took back, you know, uh, over 20 years ago at this point, um, well over 20 years ago. Um, and uh, this book, Doing Data Science, that's kind of the, um, uh, the classic, uh, more recent text, I should say, that really kind of dives into how to actually approach uh, the data science process. And I, I really like the way it's kind of set up and structured. In general, the O'Reilly books I find very useful. Um, so that's a brief introduction to the course and some of the resources. There are no required texts for the course, so these would be additional uh, versions you would want to look at. Uh, but I will provide links and URLs whenever possible to additional materials that might be helpful. Thanks, everybody, and I look forward to working with you in this course.